I want to talk a little bit about September 11th really quick um, mm -hmm. because that happened when we were kind of kids and I remember I have a sister who's seven years younger than me and I thought I was being like a big grown-up the way I was handling it just kind of like I'm going to comfort other people <laughs> I don't know, trying to, trying to be a small adult, which is probably should have been a, a key, <laughs> uh, symptom that it should have brought me into therapy. But, um, I remember her saying that she had really, she was having really bad dreams about planes. And I remember like my family, we were all kind of looking at each other, like what on earth, how on earth do you explain this to a little kid? Like, cause we couldn't even understand it. We couldn't even wrap our heads around it. So, I mean, in that case, and in cases that you've seen the, this past year, like, how can you help somebody else deal with something when you yourself don't even understand it? Um, yeah, you know, as you, as you brought up, like September 11th, I was just thinking about where I was yeah. when it happened. And I remember sitting, I think I was like in sixth grade, sitting on the floor in gym class. Yeah. And we all got dismissed to go home. Um, and my older brother was actually at home at that time. Mm -hmm. um, he was like six and a half years older than me. Oh, no way. Um, the thing about, so the thing about 9-11, right, is that it caused a collective trauma in a different way than COVID caused a collective trauma. Mm -hmm. um, with COVID, it's sort of this ongoing pandemic versus with 9-11, it was like immediate, right? There was the majority of the major events around 9-11 happened on the same day. Mm -hmm. And then there was sort of this ripple effect of attacks that remained with us for much longer than that. And trying to understand what happened and that's really where a lot of that fear and that anticipation comes from um, and feeling a loss of control, right? Like when we feel that we've either lost life for a, you know, a large definition of what that is. And when we have prolonged anxiety, it's really difficult. And that anxiety comes from a lack of understanding why something has happened. Mm -hmm. And that then begins to create this trauma in the collective and in society. And it leads to a lot of instability. And you start to question things like we were the greatest country and what happened? Like, why are there other countries now doing better than us, for example? Hmm. Um, and all of this really came out with 9-11, right? And it's coming out now as well with current events too. But your question about like your younger sister, right? She might not have really understood what was going on, but she was having these nightmares. Yeah. And this actually kind of, she was obviously alive during the event, but this, this comes to this idea of sort of intergenerational trauma as mm -hmm. well, right? So for example, the Holocaust, um, you and I, we, we didn't live through it, right? Yeah. But we are told stories about it and we're probably told stories about it since we were like live. Mm -hmm. um, other events that have might have happened, the way that we keep these, like World War One, World War Two, read the Revolutionary War, we memorialize these events, right, by having monuments and memorials and museums and stuff like that. And yes, this is good in a way because it reminds us to not forget and to grow from what happened. But these types of public monuments and rituals, though they're important in the process of grief and mourning, mm -hmm. they also remind you of what has happened, right? It reminds us that we are survivors, it reminds us to pick and choose the story that we want to tell, but it also can be very triggering for someone. It can start to build the story in their mind. Mm -hmm. So though that they're really, really beneficial, these monuments also lock in the types of feelings that were had about that situation mm -hmm. and you almost like lock them into the marble and the concrete and the metal right that's making these monuments so every time you look at them it's an experience of loss visually and spatially that's represented yeah and it's it's that unspoken emotion that we've now solidified so even though your sister might have been 
what, like six or eight or something, like she didn't have a full understanding, but she lived through it. And now when she sees reminders of it, she still knows and she's built the story that she was surrounded by. Yeah. That, the the story building, I feel like anyone we talk to around our age has that story of like where they were when they heard, because I remember exactly where I was. I was in Mr. Shrank's class. Mr. <laughs> Shrank. And he told us that he wouldn't tell us what exactly had happened, but he said it was just like Pearl Harbor. So of course we're all like, oh my God, that like the implications of that and kind of seeing like the scope, like looking to the future, like how many years is this going to affect? And I mean, I feel like I am privileged and, and lucky. Like I know a lot of people that day did start off a chain of events that, you know, was with them every single day. Mm -hmm. Um, especially like losing someone like I can't even and you know what it is is that whether it was Pearl Harbor or 9-11 or Vietnam or the atomic bomb or slavery or even family separation Mm -hmm. the central theme to the emotional experience is helplessness and with helplessness at the core of it you you cause the anxiety you cause the grief you cause the sadness right and it's really, can we take a step back and have a moment of introspection? Mm. And that's really the key part in the developmental process is like, can we step back, look inside ourselves and tolerate these very painful feelings that we're having that are caused by helplessness? So like sorrow and disappointment and guilt. Mm -hmm. And that's the stage that we wanna get to in healing because when you think about trauma, you have to, it's basically based on five major themes, right? And these are the five themes that get shattered when something traumatic happens. And it's Mm. safety, trust, power and control, esteem and intimacy. And so when you do trauma work and healing um, and therapy, it's really about how do we create a fabric again that's strong for you in those five themes of safety, trust, power and control, esteem and intimacy and rebuild those. Does anybody actually have all five of those down? I don't believe so in my mind because we have all been through experiences and experiences affect those themes. Yeah. And at various points in life, you have different levels of those themes. And, um, you know, we, we have to start to not be in denial And when we touch on collective denial, we start to touch on that collective unconsciousness Mm -hmm. and we might be in denial, but if you walk into a room of a group of people who shared a a traumatic experience, even if they're not speaking, they tend to sense what's going on in each other's bodies due to the level of stress that's present in the room. Mm. And once we start to, you know, once we stop denying that, we can have a sense of release Hmm. and we can have a sense of release from our actual nervous system physically. So there's like a chemical part to this too. (laughs) Totally. I mean, you know, it's basically like, as we spoke about earlier, everything that happens in your life, even if it's not stored as a conscious memory, it's stored in your body. Right. And so when you are put into a situation that might resemble that, those similar emotions are going to come up again, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And when we think about that collectively as a collective trauma, it's a group of people that have that storage now in their nervous system together that share it. And they will all react in a very similar way um, to a stressor. So when you're, when Mr. Frank was like, oh, it's like Pearl Harbor. Yeah. That's what he associated with. And, you know, I guarantee you that when 9-11 happened, it reactivated the physical reaction that he might've had when he found out about Pearl Harbor happening as a kid. Wow. Oh, how are we all functioning? That's a big, (laughs) how are we all doing this? 
this. <laughs>